All right, for our animal ears, there's a few key things that we can learn so that we can apply them to many different animals that we're drawing. So we're gonna actually use the cat ears kind of as our foundation, our, our basic for some of our animal ears. So let's start out with what you would imagine their basic shape to be. So we're going to create more of that triangle shape and lightly do your triangle shape. Because the truth is, when you're drawing cat ears, they are actually pointed at the top, unless you're doing fantasy creatures. Like, but even say you were doing, you know, if you were watching Fantastic Beasts, you'll see some of the images. And the point up here, sometimes what makes them look pointy is the fur that's coming off some of the areas here. So just keep that in mind. When you're doing domestic cats, they actually have a rounded tip up high here. So we're going to kind of elaborate and focus more on this ear here first, and then you can apply all these methods for all the other ones. So starting from up high here, we're going to extend a secondary one so that we can show almost the side of the ear. So this is actually the right ear. So for your study on animal ears, I would even write right ear. So when you go back to this, and if you needed some reference points, then you actually know which ear it is that you're drawing. Okay, so now you added that second kind of line here, and then the idea is that the cat head somewhere over here. Okay, now let's go back with our pencil and do more of a rounded shape here. So rounding off that top point that you see. So with cat ears, they're actually really, really thin when you look at them. And many different animal ears are super thin that are similar to that. Like if you look at mice and those type of animals and rodents, a lot of them have thin ears as well. So this other line, so this is a third line, is going to tell you the thickness of your cat ear. So sometimes just making the second line close to it be really, really thin, then you'll have a good idea to show whoever it is that's looking at your piece the thickness of your cat ear. All right, so here onto that right side line, you could round it out a bit and the thing with each and every cat, they have a crevice that comes in on this side and goes out, almost like a little C. And then it comes down again over here. So it would be worth it for you just to write a few things here with some arrows. So here you can write thin ears. So you wanna create those two lines two lines show thin ears when they're close together. All right, and over here, you can do another little tick that shows you the crevice fold. And often you'll see like even if parts of the cat is covered with a secondary piece of skin, but just for animation's sake, you can always create that crease on the outside of the ear. So this is the inner side of the ear. This is the outside of the ear. So with the right ear, you can even put inner ear and then outer ear. So now we know the ears are thin, there's a crevice fold here, and the other thing about cat ears that's good to remember is that the hair itself grows from the inner ear. And the hair actually goes and grows out towards the side rather than straight down. So keep those things in mind. So what would be helpful for us to see this a little bit better is to take our Sharpie or a marker so that you can outline those areas 
And especially if you did it press really hard with a pencil, now you can deepen your marks a little bit. So here we're gonna go up, round the top, and then we're gonna go first with that inner ear line, and then we'll do a second line really tiny, close beside it. And then that third line is going just to show the outside of the ear. So I'm just going back and forth a little bit just to create a little bit more depth. And then here I'm going to re-indicate that little crevice area. And how you do the hair could be totally up to you. Like you can be like, you know, coming out the side, these little hash lines here showing hair. Some might want to do more of that graph-like back and forth, skip a beat, more graph-like and that will show the hair and the indication darkening on that side. And remember that typically there's no hair that goes upright when it comes from the head. So imagine if this is part of your cat's head, this would just be those tiny bits of fur that would show. So not too, too much would it go right into the ear. The part that's good to kind of shadow using a higher HB, so you can use an HB, you can use 2B, 4B. You can shadow that in a little bit more coming from the inside up, rounding maybe the top part and use your finger if you like. And then it gets light just more onto that outside. So you could even use your eraser, cleaning that up a little bit. You can use a gummy artist eraser too. But that just shows you that there's a little bit more light probably coming through on that one side because the cat's ears are thinner. So remember the hair, the fur, is on the inner ear. So that's a good tip to remember. Thin ears and also the rounded Point. So now that we know all these little features, it becomes easy for us to remember. And now as you can see with these ones here, you only end up seeing just a side profile of that crevice fold here. So you can practice doing something like that, showing both ears by creating, starting with the triangle, coming down, and doing a second one showing the back of the ear and forward and this one you don't even see the inside of the ear so you can create just those little thin lines to show the thickness and then here you do that again but you're seeing remember it's the outer ear you're seeing on the right and i'm just going to kind of create the head here somewhere and you can always use your pencil because that way, when you go over it, you can take your marker and just do the ones that you want to highlight a little bit more. And then the ears with the fur comes from the inner ear rather than the outer ear. Another thing that's really good to remember is that for cats, when they're scared or spooked or creeping up on something, this tells you that the cat ears fold sideways rather than when you look at a dog, a lot of the dog ears go straight back. So if you had, for example, the top of the head here, sometimes I like to start more on the side showing that round part of the cat and I'm only gonna see a little tiny bit of the inside of the ear doing the same thing on the other side. Remember that you want to round those little tops of the ears, a little bit of a tuff, and those would be some good markings to show what the animal's doing. And remember, I quickly mentioned last week about that quick idea on how to position your cat's ears proportionally. So imagine this is your cat head here. Okay, circle for the cat head, and then you do that muzzle, and then you can draw your nose, that sort of thing. So you, if you did your basic triangle nose at the top, and then you can kind of put your crease here and to the side, 
Remember those little J's that show whether they're smiling, that sort of thing. Now, what some people do is they start right here at the bottom and then they pull up on one side, up to the other, and they do another triangle right here, okay? And this corner and this corner show you the height and the evenness of the ears. So remember, you can start to create the ears right from there on one side and then over on the other. And you can cut over part of that line and remember the outer ear has that little crevice same here, outer ear, it just comes in almost like a little V. It doesn't have to be too distinct. And you can go back with a finer marker. If you feel like a Sharpie's too thick, you can take a thinner marker like that. And coming in, same idea on this side, little crevice coming in, rounding the tips. Remember the fur? is from the inner ear and I'm moving it off to the side, just little tick marks like that. So depending on how close your kitty cat is, uh, how much detail you actually want to place on your animal. So that is the cat ears. Now for the dog ears, the thing with dogs is there's so many different types of dogs out there. If you had a pug, the pug itself always has more of those rounded topped ears. So it's really great for you to be able to study them. And same idea on the outside is you'll see almost that rounding piece of cartilage bone to the side. I'm pretty sure it's cartilage. It must not be a hard bone here. And you can once more determine the thickness of your ears and then figure out if some have any hair coming out of them. And if they do, which way are they coming? So not all dogs have hair and fur coming out this way. And then you have sometimes more of the pointer ones. So yes, it's shaped somewhat into a point for German Shepherds. And then they have sometimes more of a rounded side to them showing that area, the crevice fold and this could be part and so these are quicker easier ways to draw your dog ears but a big part of learning is to find the foundation of certain things that you can do to make it more realistic and remember some dogs have a lot of fur on their ears so if you were just to do the top of their head and then come out on both angles you just want to make sure that they're in proportion to each other. So I have a golden retriever and they have those floppy ears like that. And you can show your fur lines by doing a couple little hash marks like so. So play around, study more in the sense of looking at pictures or looking at animals that you see around your neighborhood and apply some of these little lessons that you've learned and then you'll find making ears for animation much easier to draw.